right, we back at it. Sugar Water Baby Radio. Shout out to them out there. I see y'all. Yeah, let's hope this works. <laughs> okay, saying is waiting. Oh man, this sucks. It is. I mean, it's fine. I'm I'm good with with just listening. Okay. Okay, so, hi! All right, so we got to start this thing all over with my introduction because, you know, we came back in the live. So, what's up, everybody? This is Cha-Cha Mystique, and we have in quarantine IG live in interview with the legendary Grandmaster Kaz in the building. I mean, it's such an honor, and please feel free to, if you have any questions you would like to get asked, something that you feel like I'm missing, please feel free to put that, that question in the comment, and hopefully we'll get to it let's see how this conversation go because i know it's gonna be legit so what's up though everything is good under the Casanova. you know it's as good as it could be under these circumstances right now you know yeah, we, so, we quarantine yeah so how you hold up in quarantine i'm good i'm good you know i'm i'm constantly burning something <laughs> it's trying to trying to stay creative you know and i'm writing and you know, messing with my music, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm good. I'm doing what I normally do, except indoors. Yes, yes. And, you know, I know a lot of, especially artists, especially un unsigned artists and in indie artists, they might be taking a hit because I know a lot of people do make money when they do uh, performance and, and concerts. And I know that, isn't this the season for Hush tours? Are you still doing Hush hip-hop tours? Well, yeah, well, I'm taking the same hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I'm an artist. I, I work with people, you know, and I'm a live performance artist. So, you know, I'm 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 more not, you know, um, dependent on like the royalty checks, you know, flowing in on the regular. I got to get out, and bust my ass, and still. So yeah, I'm, I'm being affected as well. Uh, the Hush tours, of course, had to stop. Um, yeah. uh, you know, we we're on a bus, you know, with thirty people at a time. You know what I mean? Doing hip hop tours for four hours, so we in close proximity to people constantly. So we definitely had to stop our tours, um, and the country has pretty much stopped tourism. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nobody's coming in here just to go see what's happening anymore. You know, so yeah, my job is stopped, and I've been on that bus for eighteen years. Oh. You know what I mean? Year round, and 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 this this is a big stoppage for us. You know what I mean? There's no shows. My birthday was April 18th. I had a big, yes, big happy show. belated birthday. Thank yes, happy belated birthday. Yes, thank you, Chai. So, when, how did you quarantine your birthday? What was that like? Well, I was supposed to have a a a, a show. Uh, big Daddy Kane was going to perform. I had Ooh, Big Daddy Kane and Bell Star, and of course, all the people I know in hip hop. It was going to be star studded. My 60th birthday, but uh. You know, this this happened, and then everything had to shut down. So I pretty much was in the house. I had about two, two, three people, you know, in the house, you know, and uh, we, we popped a few bottles, and, you know, I, I went live for a while on my birthday. So that's how I set it off, pretty much. Well, as long as you in good company and good spirits, it's all good. Like, let's get it, though. But speaking, um, trying to, like, really elaborate on the um, Hush Hip Hop tours, for those that may not know, how did that all start? Well, Hush Hip Hop Tours was the brainchild of a lady named Deborah Harris. Deborah grew up in the Bronx, uh, not too far from me, as, ma as a matter of fact. And uh, she decided that she wanted to create a tour that would increase tourism to the Bronx. Okay, because people come, it's a billion dollar industry, tourists come to New York but they come to Manhattan and Times Square and then, you know what I mean? They don't really come up to the Bronx and her thinking, well, this is the birthplace of hip hop. You know, we need people coming up here, checking the Bronx. So she created the Hush tour, but she didn't want to be a tour guide. She just wanted to create the tour and then to have the pioneers of hip hop do the tours. So that's, that's, that was her idea. She started it in 2002. And uh, at first, there was a, a few of us, uh, myself, uh, DJ Red Alert, um, uh, Cool Herc, uh, uh, Raheem from the Furious Five was there. I think, didn't Dougie first do it too? Dougie's done time? it, yeah, Dougie's done it with us as well. 
we've had a lot of people guest and, and come on, you know what I mean? But uh, throughout the 18 years, I've been the one who pretty much stuck to the thing. And it became like, you know, like my my, my thing. Uh, once we expand, we do other uh, other boroughs, like Johnny Famous uh, does our Brooklyn tour now. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, we do walking tours, you know, from Harlem, you know, t uh, from uh, Spanish Harlem to Harlem. And uh, we have other people that do those. Reggie Reg from the Crash Group, you know what I mean? Does yeah. one else. So we have different people still, you know what I mean, involved with the tour. But basically, it, it, it's been my baby for 18 years. So I think... I, yes, I'm and I know, and, it, and it's been some years. I'm, I remember seeing you on the east side. I live on the east side of Spanish Harlem, and I bet I ran into you on a humble doing one of the tours, and even my son got involved. So, and that was a, a dope experience too. And look, today we're having a whole conversation, no and doubt. I was way before radio. This uh, me, you know, decided to have this as a career choice. So, like you've been doing. You, you know, there's a lot of controversy about, you know, because Rapper's Delight, let's, you know, was like one of the breakout bigger songs that came out. And in recent years, you came out saying that, you know, you feel like you didn't get your just due. Since the last time you spoke about this, has anything changed as far as you getting acknowledgement and, and, and as, as far as that uh, being a writer to that song, an influential writer to that song? Well, I mean, What's happened is that I haven't really been out crusading, you know, like to get, uh, you know, notoriety or justification. I mean, the, the hip hop and the industry knows, you know, I, I wrote uh, all the Big Bang Hank lyrics for rappers to life. But the so you were technically like the first Ghost Rider in hip hop. I guess I guess you could say that. You know what I mean? I don't know <laughs> if anybody wrote. Uh, Jocko's rhymes or King Tim the Third's rhymes or uh, any of those other rap songs that never were heard that may have come yeah. out, you know, around the same time or before. But I'm, you know, basically that that's what people say, and, and you know, it sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but uh, like I said, I wasn't, I wasn't, I haven't been campaigning to 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 bring about any revision of the story or anything it's just do interviews do people look like you you know that that bring it up and through every different mode of uh you know communication that comes up because of the new technology now we're not just doing interviews or radio interviews now we're doing internet interviews and we're doing you know what i mean um, I, I, Instagram interviews and Facebook interviews and this one. So different people come up with, you know, and, and they ask the same question. So that's why you've heard, you know, that Sugar Hill story a lot, you know, in the last few years, because a lot more entities have started interviewing and asking questions. And basically, and there has been that documentary as well, uh, talking about the sugar and how they felt like they got robbed and exactly. replaced by other members. And speaking of that, do you feel like that was like a, a normal practice back then? Or it was just something that um, was as an isolated incident between the record label, with that particular record label and particularly with you guys? Do you well, feel I like mean, they did that with other um, artists on their roster as well? Or it was just this isolated incident? Yeah, well, basically, that's just the politics of the record business. Um, these guys were, they, they, they knew the, the industry, they knew the record business, but they also were associated with gangsters and, um, you know, who, who funded, you know, the record company. So you had more input on what to do and how to do it than just record company people. You know what I mean? So the practice of, let's, of, of jerking the artists is, is record company practice. Yeah, it was standard the, procedure. Yeah, it's standard procedure in, in the record. In the record <laughs> That's record. off the rip. So, so right, the records. putting your name on somebody else's lyrics or something is nothing new. You know what I mean? Keeping artists ignorant as far as publishing and writing and the money that they do is nothing new. That's standard practice in, in, in the record business. Yeah, so it wasn't yes, like me. Frankie Lyman. There were so many artists, you know, in the industry that was going through it. Even like TLC, Tony Braskin, you know, people not, you know, really getting their just due. Yeah. And 
Yeah, and I totally get it. And it's be, and even on a on a um a writer span, uh, standpoint, you know, you wouldn't uh, uh, know that so many uh, artwork was created through other people. You really think it's this person they got in front of you, and there's a whole brain and real talent behind that that person. I guess you know, right in so, front of the camera. Yeah, yeah. Not it's not always a person, but there's another mode. Uh, uh, an inspiration that people get things from, and you think everybody that you see um, did everything they that they came up with everything that they do, and that's not always the case. Um, in hip hop, it used to be a crime not to write your own stuff or not to be the. Yes. You know what I mean? It was like, what the? What are you doing? That was part of being that. But once you know, hip hop became part of the record business. The record business kind of changed the rules. You know, once it, it came, once it became commercial, yeah, yeah, it, the rules went out the damn window. You know what I mean? The ethics, the standards, all that went out the window. It's like this is a business now. You know, I don't know how your culture runs, but this is how this business runs. Yes. So it was, but it, it seemed like you had like similarities in that type of situation because you were involved in this dope series, The Get Down, the Netflix series. Uh huh. And it, um, you did a lot of consultation work uh, on that show, right? Well, actually, I, I didn't really do a lot of consultation. They didn't bring me in until the second season, which was okay. actually the, the second half of the first season. And okay. uh, the, I didn't want actually to be involved because I hadn't been asked to be involved. You did a whole season of it without me knowing, you know, or being consulted or asked to be involved, so don't invite me to the premiere. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was my attitude. Uh, but the director got in touch with me, and he asked me to come to the premiere. And when I got there, I found out that he had been on my hip-hop tour like seven years prior to that. So he had been doing research for the Get Down for years before this thing even happened. So I kind of got even more pissed. It was like, you knew and you got some of this information from me and you didn't, like, I'm not... Uh, Fill know. me in. Yeah, like, yeah. That's what I said. It's like it's like they left you out again. That's what I meant. I don't know if it, if I, you know, it came off clear, but that's what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah well, like, you know, yeah, it's like you being left out of the equation again. Right, right. So so it's, it's like I'm not going to protest against it. But I'm not going to be out there running around championing the cause. I'm not going to watch it. I ain't going to be down. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to co-sign it. That's what I'm saying. That was my thing. No. And then he contacted me personally. And he was like, well, I'm getting ready working on the second season. And um, I want your story to be part of that second season. So, you know, would you? And then that's how they got me involved in the second season. But I didn't. It was only about me you know what i mean it wasn't about the overall you know project it was only about my my, my little piece of story that they had involved in so if you if you notice that in the second half of it there's a grandmaster cast character in the get down and when they do their finale you know what i mean i come out they do it i'm the cas and all, and all that which is cool which is cool but um i uh I, myself, along with a lot of other people, I think should have been more involved in the actual planning process and the consultation process. There were only two influences, um, true true hip-hop influences in the movie, uh, Grandmaster Flash. And, uh, yeah, and hip-hop is so vast, you would think they will have, like, a great body of people, especially the pioneers, to, to you know share the experiences and to have a, 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 a accurate accurate depiction of actually what went on because you, you know you was there. I mean, I thought the get down was was uh, so great, but like giving it to you personally, you know, you are so multi talented. Like you got bars, you DJ, you know, you 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 had a, a great career. Even though people say you know you may not be as famous as you deserve to be. But I always thought you were. Like, there's a lot of people who still think you are. You know what I'm saying? So where did all of that come from? Like, I, I don't know. I mean, where did what come from? What do you mean? <laughs> like, your talent. Like, did you grew up listening to music? Did oh, some, oh, somebody oh. used to take you to the park? 
you you know how did you be in the enter- how did it start you being in the entertainment business um I, it didn't start in the business it just started in the you know in the entertainment part I mean, I grew up around the time when hip hop was was first started and being formed. So, I was early. I was influenced early by the movement and, and was an early participant. Like as soon as I heard of it, I got down with it. You know what I mean? And uh, I lived like in walking distance from fifteen twenty Sedgwick Avenue, which is uh, regarded by by some as the birthplace of hip hop. So of course. Whatever went on in that neighborhood, I was privy to it first and early. So that's how I got, I became a part of it. And I, uh, you know, started DJing, well, dancing first. I was, a, you know, a little B-boy, did my little B-boy thing first. Oh, uh, you was on the cardboard, though? There <laughs> wasn't no cardboard, ma. It was no cardboard. Oh, no, what? Nah. Straight concrete? We danced on the ground. We danced on concrete. Oh, that's why I said straight carpet. Oh my God, y'all backs was that ripped up and hurt at the yeah, end well, of the well, night. Well, we weren't doing those elaborate moves that you see, like uh, you know, rock steady in them. That came later, you know what I mean? Okay. And that's, that's, about that, to say. That, that's when the cardboards and linoleum came out. But well, yeah, we you got smart quick. <laughs> we was pretty much up rocking, you know what I mean? And if we went down, it was like a quick, you know, move. We never got our sneakers dirty and popped back up. But these guys are you're doing gymnastics and shit. You know, this is a whole nother level to it. But yeah, I used to dance at first, but um, the music always uh, is what really got me. So, you know, I, I started DJing. And then, um, of course, the microphone comes into play when you're a DJ. You got to make announcements. But there wasn't no MCs. There wasn't nobody MCing, you know what I mean? Like saying rhymes on the mic. Um, the closest thing to that was the club DJs, like the older DJs from us, the DJ Hollywood, Pete DJ Jones, and those guys, you know, used to talk a little something on the mic, but, you know, they weren't rapping, you know what I mean? It, we evolved it from just talking and just, you know, to, to, to rap as, you, as we know it today. So, so what was your what was your first experience like? Your first bars like you know? Did you have like a, a cliche Eminem moment where you was about to throw up and nervous in front of people, or you like really rocked it? Like what was what was that like? I was never like, I was never nervous. You know what I mean? I'm a ham sandwich, okay. <laughs> and 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 really, it, to be honest with you, you know I'm really you know kind of an uh, introvert and and kind of shy, but hip hop is my is my alter ego, you know what I mean? Hip hop, hip hop ain't scared. I mean, my, my alter ego in hip hop, Kaz ain't scared of nothing. I mean, Kaz will talk to anybody. Kaz will do, you know what I mean? Kaz will, you know what I mean? But me, I, I'm, I'm not really, no, nah, I, I, I'm more back up and look at stuff, you know what I mean? And, and observe. And observe you know what I mean? that. But Kaz is a ham sandwich. So I ain't never had no problem performing in front of people or doing what it is that I do. You know what I mean? When I'm doing what I do, I do it in front of anybody. I don't care what yeah. I'm, you know what I mean? But just me, period, I'm a little more private, a little more backed up. Yeah, because, I, I mean, every time we bumped, it was always so great. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was nothing for you to take a picture with me or, you know, anything like that. So, it, you know, I, I really do feel like you have a really dope energy, dope vibes. Now, I read somewhere, like, you have, like, this sacred stash of mad composition notebooks and everything is written all nice and neatly. And, you know, do you still have that, that archive, those archives of, of raps? Well, I have I have some, but I donated a lot of it to uh, the Cornell uh, University. Uh, wow, they, they shout have, out to Cornell University. Yeah, they have one of the biggest hip-hop collections, you know what I mean, in the world. And um, I just thought that I didn't want to leave a lot of stuff here you know, something happened to me, I go, you know, people don't know what's valuable or what. They just see stuff and they just go through it, you know what I mean, or may give it away or throw it away. I didn't, I didn't want that. I know that my contribution to hip-hop to be solidified and, and for people yes. years from now, ages from now, to be able to look and see a record of, of what I've done. So I thought it was would, important. Would you, did you, would you ever believe that hip-hop 
will be that so influential that it's being taught in, in, in um, universities? Cause, I mean, that that's a recent, it's still new to me. You know, I don't know about the youngest. They probably think it's an old thing. But, you know, me, I'm in my mid-30s. You know, you never used to have that in university. Shout out to Morgan State University. I mean, even then, they was touching on it lightly. You know, they were still trying to discover how to articulate it and, and make it a part of uh, a curriculum. How do you feel, you know, seeing that? Like, you know, does it feel good to you? I mean, yeah, it feels good. And, and um, I never I, I never really imagined that it would grow to these proportions. I never thought that it wouldn't. I, would, I wasn't one of those people that thought that it would never go anywhere. I just didn't have the vision to see how far, you know, it would go and how many different things it would encompass. Um, I mean, they're teaching hip hop at Harvard. I mean, now, I mean, in, in, in collegiate institutions and stuff like that. The thing is to me, yeah, even in Columbia. Yeah, but we're still, we're, that, that's what I meant. Ivy League, uh, Ivy League yeah. institutions. And the thing is to me, I think that it's important who's teaching hip hop. Yes, that, that's, yes, I'm glad you said that. Hip hop is not yes, that I'm... old that the original practitioners of it and the people who are truly expert at what it is because they actually helped create it and were a part of it are the are the true professors and 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 historians of the culture, you know, and people just you know read what they said, what they've said, or you know, and then all of a sudden, with now you're a historian because you read. With somebody, yeah. you know what I mean? That because they not really, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Because you know, a lot of people, you know, like even now, like if you go on Instagram and you click on the hashtag hip hop, you don't see people like us, people who are really, you know, a part of the culture. You see all these other things mimicking, and you know, I kind of find that disrespectful as well. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of a lot of people who do try to hit, whether it's hip hop dance, hip hop anything, you know, especially when it's other cultures doing it, it's such a misrepresentation. Uh, it's not never as rich, you know. It's almost, you know, cat comedy, you know. And then they, and then they get all these accolades. For something they don't really have no root in, no real inside to. So I totally get that. Like it, it really like pisses me off. Like that's one of my pet peeves to see that. Like they'll pay somebody who's in tune to to do the work, but somebody who's who is involved, who's in, who, who's a part of the culture, a part of it moving forward as well. Exactly. You know? So exactly. So yeah. I, you know, I have a problem with that, and and I understand that everybody you know, can't articulate the culture, you know, as well as someone who's, you know what I mean, in a college or a researcher or something like that. But that don't mean you know more. You just read from what somebody else's, you know, experiences and stuff are. But I, while we are here, while we are still here, and when I say we, I'm talking about the first school of hip hop. Yeah. Um, we need to be approached to be professors or adjunct professors um, at these universities and stuff like that to add some validity to the stories that these researchers or so-called historians are telling. Yes, I, I totally, totally agree. And I think, and I feel like, okay, so how do you feel about, because um, I know you was abducted in the, the Bronx <laughs> Wall of Fame, but how do you feel like hip hop having its own Hall of Fame? Like a lot of hip hop artists are being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which I feel like that is so dope. But at the same time, a lot of us have to fight so hard to even get acknowledged, especially, you know, when the acknowledgement is after the fact, it was never at the beginning or at its true essence. Don't you feel like it's about time hip hop had its own real high standard uh, accolades such as the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah, I, I truly do believe that. And uh, But I think it has to be the right entity. I think it has the right, the people have to be involved. It's like the same thing we were just talking about with the colleges and people teaching hip hop. You know what I mean? I, if, you, if there's going to be a building or, or, or some kind of institution to hip hop, then the people who build hip hop should be at the forefront of that or at in some way deeply involved into that 
You understand or at least what I'm building it. Fuck yeah. that shit. Have, they have a football moment. For us, by us. I'm just saying. We need to build our own. You, need, you know, so this way we can vote and, and it'll be fair and it's not biased and it's not, you know, and, and I feel like that's a, good, a great way because, you know, this generation is like that, you know, old generation, new generation type thing. Well, I think that's a great platform to display the older generation so that respect can be had. I mean, a lot of people always talk about, well, you know, nobody, the the younger, the new generation never disrespect Aerosmith and, and, and all these other people. But they have platforms to, to, to sit on like, on like that, like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and stuff like that. And I feel like that uh, bridged the gap. Yeah, I think I think it would add uh, some kind of validity to a certain degree. But the problem is that hip hop doesn't have a hierarchy, you know what I mean, to start. It doesn't have a a, a, a board of a chairman, a board or, or you know what I mean, that you have to answer to when you use hip hop or, you know, misuse hip hop. So anybody in their grandmother can hip hop delegation. Right, right. I'm, I'm just saying, anybody and their grandmother, this was never established among the pioneers or among the creators of hip-hop. We never had a unified front or created a, a, a kind of a governing board over the culture. Whereas, okay, if you want to do something involved in, with hip-hop or whatever, then there's some guidelines that have to be looked up, you know, gone by. You can't just say, I'm a hip-hop this and go do it like you, there can't be a hip hop strip club. You understand what I'm saying? There can't be a hip hop. You know what I mean? You know, just some 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 shit to the left. You know what I mean? Excuse yeah. my expression, but you. But know, no, you right. Say that shit because, to the all the way to the fucking left. Because people, <laughs> you know, there's a hip hop fucking everything. I got a box. I'm looking at right here in my room. It says hip hop, fish and chicken. Okay, there's a store in Baltimore. But is it good though? Like, <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah, but is it good when you get that fuck? Do with hip hop though. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're what right. does hip hop get out of you putting hip hop on your say? Or oh, this is the hip hop exactly. style. How many stores you went by say the hip hop this or the hip hop that? Who who did you yeah. ask to do that? Like who? You know what I mean? And that's the problem is, and that's why we have no stake in the culture except for just. All right, we started it. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's it. You know what I mean? Where every other institution has a foundation. It has a governing board. It has rules. It has bylaws. It's like, you, 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 if you fuck with this, then you got to do it like this. If not, you can't do it. And if you do, then there's going to be consequences to that. So that was never established. So now people just went and ran rampant with the motherfucking culture in every direction and now there's a hip hop everything but everything. but it's true essence and i feel like that's crazy too because they run everywhere but it's true essence and then they try to like chastise you for like trying to school you but we do it like this and i think that's the, the once again the disconnect with, with generations as well you know there's no solid foundation like how you were saying for them to, to really stand on so that shit is loose they do what the fuck they want. They say what they want. I mean, I, I feel like hip hop is freedom. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a, a a way to express your true self. I get all of that, but as soon as it came commercialized, you had now you had to watch what you say. You had to whitewash your lyrics. You had to watch the way you dress and and, and all this other stuff. You had to pertain a persona persona outside of what it what it really was you know and i feel like a lot of people bank off that they have like i said dance classes they do all this other and they don't be hip-hop it'd be so fucking whack and tacky even to the i mean i feel like hip-hop is a lifestyle like you live breathe eat that shit the way you talk the way you dress you know certain things how you connect to people just everything and it, it just gets so bland out there you know it's, it's like cloning 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 and it's not at its true self you know yeah, yeah. when do, do you feel like hip-hop died at some point um no nah, no nah, no the essence um didn't die it's just that the um the essence is only so big and it only lasts so long. When you start something, 
it, it only lasts so long, and then once it's established, it's there. So that part of it is gone. The beginning of it is gone. The, the time when you were creating it and coming up with it and really, you know what I mean, molding it and shaping it, it's, it's here now. So that part is gone. You know what I mean? So now that it's here, people are trying to come up with different ways to improve on it or to do it another way, or people can't do it at the standard that you did it. So they lower the standard and they do some old bullshit wow. and they call that hip hop. So, so now lower the standard. I like that. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yes, keep preaching. I like that. Yeah. So now you have any and everybody and their mama saying what hip hop is, and well, this is this is my kind of hip hop. Well, this is this kind of well, yeah. Well, well, I'm a, well. This is my hip hop. You know what I mean? So now you got people like that's. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I don't want to get negative, but you just, now you got people <clears throat> totally devoid of n number one any any love for the culture, any sense of the culture, and really any talent uh -huh. for the culture. So once you lower the level of talent, that means anybody could do hip hop. Yes, and I'm glad you said that because another thing that I be always saying all the time about that situation, like especially like on social media, right? People be getting insta famous off of other shit. Like they don't be hip hop at all. They don't spit a bar, you know, they don't have no music out, nothing. It could be comedy or some other shit and they gain following through that. Cool. You know what I'm saying? That's your grind, that's your hustle. People love it. Like it, I love it. But then they'll you know, say, oh, I'm about that music and, and make a song, and then they shit be all overly commercialized, and then it's like the mumble rap phase, and all these other different things that's, that's you know, could consider outside of hip-hop or sub-genre of hip-hop, but it's people that's not even real hip-hop, so it's like, you know, like in the 90s, early 2000s, stuff like that, people was in their basements, wherever the fuck, making a mixtape. That was their focus. Like, it was nothing else but making a mixtape, trying to get it to the record labels, trying to shop it around to, to people and stuff like that. That was it. It wasn't, I'm making niggas laugh first, and then I'm going to make a song, and then I'm going to blow up in my shit, and then I have trash on the radio. It's not, oh, I'm going to, uh, I don't know, sell hair or some shit. But, you know, I can spend a little bars and then you also have more trash on the radio. So I think, you know, the hip hop delegation can, you know, prevent some shit like that from continuously happening because I do feel like it's whitewashed and it's diluted. You know what I'm saying? And the standards are very low. Yeah, so well, what, how I, do we, I think we, 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 we can't, we, we would do the same thing if we tried to be, you know what I mean, ex exclusive and be like, okay, well, nah, that ain't that ain't hip hop, or nah, that ain't hip hop, but not that. But I'm just saying that once different kinds of different uh, contributions are made to the culture, you know, if there's a foundation in it to cipher, okay, well, this is this, let's make a lane for this. You know what I mean? Because you can't call everything hip hop, and if it is, there's a there's some kind of different kind of hip hop, motherfuckers. That ain't the hip hop that I know. Yeah, I mean that ain't the hip hop that, that 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 this generation or that generation or that generation somewhere something got fucked up. <laughs> okay. Do you do, so? Do you agree with Tyler the Creator when he was like when he was disagreeing with his music being categorized as hip hop? Sure. I agree. I agree because your music don't have to be hip hop for it to be music or to be relevant. They felt like they categorized him as hip hop because he's black, exactly, as opposed to what his real his and he he felt offended. Well, if he's so just, if he's saying rhymes, all right, then it's hip hop. All right, now, now you can you can categorize yourself any way you want, but if you're using tools for the culture, then that's what the fuck it is. All right, if there's somebody, okay. scratching, somebody scratching in the background on your record, that shit is hip hop. You understand what I'm saying? So, so you can't you can't take from hip hop and then try to dismiss it. You know what I mean? That's too many of these niggas out here doing hip hop talking about well, shit. No, nah, I ain't no rapper. I ain't no hip hop. Then what the fuck you doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. What you doing? What you doing? Taking time, attention, resources. You know, and all that shit away from people who are doing this. Strategy, your look, everything. Yeah, so I mean, it's I mean, the commerciality of it 
is is overtaking the cultural aspect. And now because of social media, you, shit, you, you ain't got to be nobody. You know what I mean? You just pop up on the tube and do something stupid. You know what I mean? And you know you a star. Then you can turn that into okay. Now I'm hip hop. You know what I mean? It's, so. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. We just so far away from the culture, you know, commercially that you really got to dig deep to, to, to go into it culturally. You know what I mean? To just be a part of the movement. You know what I mean? And like, fuck the Instagram and the Facebook and all that. This and that. Such a search of people. And, you know what I mean? And I'm good with that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And, but uh, just the commercialism is what really just, you know, take the culture. Yeah. And I, and I felt like that's also like conditioning of people too. like, you know, especially like these major labels, they put out what they want to put out to condition the young folks that are listening to it. You know what I'm saying? So you might have great records that won't see, you know, commercialism light of day. But then you have records, you know, that sending wrong messages or are, are the opposite of what the culture intended to be. You know what I'm saying? So I think it could get tricky. Like you're right. Nobody can like really put a cap on hip hop because hip hop is for everybody. It's a culture. It's a lifestyle. It's you know the way you think. But at the same time, I don't know. Like I hate the the fact that others could be so free with you know like you said you know whitewashing and and, and all that stuff. I don't know. It just makes me feel some type of way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, uh, you know, especially when I live it. Our society as a whole just has an out with the old and with the new mentality. And um, that has a lot to, more to do with industry and business than it does with culture. Because if you think back, especially with our people, we embrace our elders. Yes. The people in our culture are the important people until they leave here. You know what I mean? So but in, in, in this motherfucking culture, or, or, or in, like I said, a commercial corporate culture, fuck you, we done with you, 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 you your usefulness is gone, let's move on to the next thing, we need something. And they learned that behavior, conditioning, and, and, yes, that's a great point. That's how society is, so that's how business works as well, it's like, okay, this has had its run, our, our stats say that this is cool for this amount of time, and when these numbers start going down, it's time to cut our losses and get somebody else in there, get a new face, and if people understand, they take it personally. It ain't possible. This shit is business. You bought a machine now. You know what I mean? That as long as you stay a, a relevant cog in that machine, then you good. You might have to be able to eventually break away from it and start your own machine. I e Z or these cats who have succeeded to that level where you can do that. But the average person out here, the average musician or artist out here, especially hip hop artists, can't do that. You know what I mean? So they try to succumb and fit into whatever, you know, the, 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 the ideal is at that particular time. So that's why we never get to grow no classic artists. You know what I mean? There's no, you know what I mean, somebody that's, because they just out with the old and in with the new. They don't give us time to become classic. Hip hop is the only genre of music with an old school. Mm hmm. That's right. That's right, because every every other genre is classic rock and roll, classic jazz. Classic R&B, classic, 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 but old school R&B, or old school hip-hop. Yeah. That's what they call it, so, I mean, the whole idea is that we need to, Hip hop 
commercial commercially well you know historically that is known do you feel like that was like the first wave of all of that that was the beginning of of all of this yeah well, I mean, because it ushered hip-hop into the music industry so that yeah that's the first time i mean prior to that the only people that could rob us was like a promoter you know what I mean? Because whoever, like the promoter hires you and puts you on a card for a jam, and then at the end of the night, the money is short or whatever, or, you know, this happened or that happened or this and that. We had to go through that for years as well. Please, niggas still going through that. These janky ass promoters these days, that shit ain't changed. So a lot of, a lot of the promoters the wild, turned into record companies and shit. So they still had the same mentality, you know, with the record businesses they had as promoters. Um, you know, prior to that, we promoted our own parties. You know, I know I did. You know what I mean? Since we talking 75, 76, 77, I gave my own parties. I made my own flyers. I, I got my own spots. You know what I mean? And, and um, Nobody can jerk me because I, it's only me and, and the person I have at the door. Now, now when I get down with you and I'm going to just come and perform at your joint, it's whatever you connect it and you tell me what it is. So we went through years of that and jerked my promoters. So uh, the record company is no business. It's just, there's just an element in business that's so fucking greedy that they just can't give people they fucking fair share. Especially something so great like hip hop. Now, get to the fun side. I want to ask you. I always ask this question on the show, and I'm curious to hear your answers. Who is your top five, dead or alive? But you can't say. Well, I don't think you would say this current Mount Rushmore like Biggie, Nas, Pop. You can't say those people. Jay Z. You can't say those people. Well, I probably wouldn't anyway. But yeah, right. That's why I said it probably wouldn't apply. But I got to just say that anyway. The only reason why I say that is is that because that's like the general answer. And and, and with this question, there's like a general, you know, answer that comes with it. You know, there's always the nods and, and, you know what I mean, and, and the big, you know, it depends on what generation you're talking to. You know what I mean? Yeah. My generation, you know what I mean? You're talking to me and Belly Bell and Homo D, you know, as far as MCs are concerned. You know what I mean? And then there's a next generation. You know, there's a KRS and a Big Daddy Kane and the Rock Ends, you know what I mean? And there's another generation, you know what I mean? So there's there's been so many I mean dope lyricists and MCs in the game. So give me five right I, now. I five off the dome right now. Okay, I'm not gonna give you the top five, but I'll give you five. Okay. All right. Are you okay, I'm ready. Uh, Melly Mel, uh, Kale, okay. Rock Kim, Black Thought, um, um, Shout out to Black Thought. People don't say him much. Because people don't say him much. Yes, and he's, yes, and he's, he's, yes. And who's the last one? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, Buster Rhymes. Wow, shout out to Buster. Yeah, he's in a lot of current people's um top five. Do you know who we I'm starting to hear a lot too? It's DMX Fab, Jada Kiss, or anybody from the lots, but mostly Jada Kiss. I think those people should be put on that Mount Rushmore because I'm tired of every time I ask somebody that those are the top three names they always say. Yeah, you but, know. But, but, All right, but, so being oh. look, look who I didn't say. Look how many people I didn't say. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. I mean, Trench. You know what I mean? You got a dope Trench in there. Nobody said they ain't even mentioned Pop yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, because Uptown Anthem was it. What? Uh, he went off on that. Uptown. I love that. Scene. And there's a lot of people, if we sit and think about it, if we sit and think about it, there's anybody who in their right mind would be like, nah, it's too, it's too many to say five. You know what I mean? And me being one of these cats that is considered one of them sometimes, I, I can I can't even I wouldn't even try to say, well, this is a top five of them seeds with all the niggas that I know that can do this shit for real and on a real side. I mean, you don't know everybody. Everybody don't know who everybody is. Just names I can mention you like, huh? Cause you don't 
Like, I'm still waiting for that moment, too, where somebody say somebody, I'd be like, I never heard of it. Like, huh? Well, you usually mention the people that you know are known for that. And, and, and yeah. it's, it's a natural, you know what I mean? It's a natural thing. You automatically do it. You know, when people ask you that question, you say, okay, you think of all the time that you've heard this question asked and all the people that everybody say all the time, and that helps with your decision. And then you like, yeah, okay, uh, yeah, this one, this one, this one, this one, because those are usual people. But if you really, really think about it, there's so many more. Yes, it really is. Now, I want to be messy, but I asked if this is the follow-up question. We do this. Who's your bottom three? Three rappers, artists, however you want to call it, who should have never touched the mic. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard uh, that shit. It was like, it's trash. Straight trash. Get that shit out of here. You frisbee CDs and shit. Who? Wow. Running over MP3s or USBs, whatever the fuck. Who's your bottom three? Wow. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Because the Grandmaster got a bottom thing? Don't be politically correct and shit. No, I don't. They should have tried. They should have tried. <laughs> no, I can't. It, that's not for me to judge. I, you know what I mean? I can't do that. I can't. If I yeah. can't do a and top five, right I definitely to. can't do a bottom three. You know? Okay. Because People be doing it, too. I was just curious what you was going to say. So many niggas suck. I, <laughs> so many motherfuckers suck and should never have, you know, even tried to do this. Next thing, I want to get back to work. You know what I mean? I want to, yes. uh, all, the, all the time that we've been, you know, quarantined, I, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I've been in here working. You know what I mean? I've been writing and I've been, um, you know, just coming up with different ideas and projects and things that uh, I could do and that I'm going to address when this thing is over. So uh, I want to get right back to work, pretty much. I mean, tourism, I don't know how soon that's going to open, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how, how soon we'll be able to get back to our Hush tours. But do you do you feel like this quarantine is like a, another conditioning process? You know, do you feel like, because I know I see a lot of memes and even just regular posts, people, just people um, talking about what they're, they're dying to do. Or as soon as, you know, outside open up, you know, it's the, one of the first things they're going to do. Do you feel like even though they wish and hope for certain things that this whole process that we're going through right now is, is actually going to change the way we interact with each other, the way we do, the way we uh, celebrate each other? Uh, it's I think that everything that happens on this kind of a scale, um, if anybody with any kind of knowledge of, uh, and I don't mean like I'm no professor, you know what I mean? But I've been, I've been on this planet for 60 years and I've seen a lot of things transpire. Okay. And I'm old enough to know that <clears throat> these things don't just happen. Um, you know, we're, we're under, a hierarchy that makes things happen and they just do things to experiment with, you know, it, it, to see if something will work. So I think this is just one of those things. Um, if it changes the way we interact, it's because that's what they wanted it to do. And, th and this, and the, uh, the pandemic was their excuse to make it happen. Yes. You know what I mean? Just like, uh, if they want a budget for something or whatever, well, they'll make a, they'll create a threat. And then because of that threat, the actions they have to take behind that threat, you know, change the way that we have to uh, react and, and interact forever after that. I mean, you can't get on a plane the same no more now, you know what I mean? Yeah. So in, 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 one, in some way or another, it's definitely going to change the way that we, uh, we, we live and, and react. For, for are you, you, are you, are you gonna, would you get vaccinated? If, uh, Hell no. If, you know, they, okay. Hell no. I don't, I don't get flu shots, all right? Me neither. I don't get I and I don't get sick. That's the crazy shit. I don't get sick at all. Like, well, me or my kids. My, I don't get my kids none of that shit. We don't get sick. Like, and if it is, it's like a day or some shit like that. It's not no, like, major... I suffer more from allergies than what I do from a fever, a simple cold, 
none of that shit. So I'm blessed to stay because I know a lot of people is not blessed to, to have that. But I think a lot of that shit does make you prone to these other things. They just not, I think they're not telling. I don't know. It's just weird. Like, I don't know. People lived on this earth for millions of years so without all these shits. And you see a lot of these uh, viruses and, and pandemics happening to places that's not natural to me. You know what I'm saying? And my people. So I don't know. Like, it's just weird, you know. I don't know, but I'm not trying to hold you up as so much. I do want to, you know, talk about and stuff like that. But, you know, we about to count down soon. So before we go, is there anything that you would like to say to anybody? You know, um, any words of advice or encouragement during this crisis and hard time? Um, you know, well, listen, something you want to promote? Uh, n not really. Not really. Basically, uh, I just want to keep it real. I'm scared like every fucking body else, okay? Anybody with any motherfucking sense out here is scared. Um, <clears throat> I'm not panicked, but uh, I'm fucking fearful of what's going on. Uh, uh, I lost a son to this COVID shit and many well, friends. And my condolences to you and your family. Thank you. And many friends and associates. And uh, I know it's not a game, but whatever they do it, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter what you think or what you feel. This shit is going to affect you. You know what I mean? And so I just suggest that everybody just take the precautions that you that you have to take. Don't rush to get out of here, to get out. You know what I mean? Because this shit ain't going to just go away in one day. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, everybody could just go outside. That's bullshit. And if it, and if it is that, then the whole shit was bullshit in the first place, and they just been killing people. So I mean, yeah, whatever like, way you like, like Fred the Godson too. Shout out to Fred the Fred the Godson. He just passed. Exactly. You know, like I said, yeah. it, a lot of people I know personally. I, you know what I mean? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. So I'm I'm not taking it as a joke. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to um, be you know. A uh, 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 conspiracy theorist. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the fuck is going on. But and, I know, I, and that's I the, know the most frustrating part about it all. That's the most frustrating part about it all. Like you got so much information at your disposal, which is good. But the cash twenty two is like too much. What, how do you even decipher exactly what is which? Exactly. You know, and which what do you know is fake news and what's not? You know that's, you know what that term fake news is real. Because a lot of the exactly. things on the internet that we see every day, who you don't even know who put that shit up there. And a lot of mm -hmm. them is different people who, who have nothing to do with Facebook or the Instagram. They just put messages out there for you to feed into or feed off of. So it's so hard to decipher, like you said, all this fucking information. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking confused. And um, I'm just trying to fucking stay, 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 you know, Stay safe, me and my family. You know what I mean? Until, you know, this shit pans Give out. us free until we free. Yeah, Give much. us free. <laughs> I mean, I'm good in the house. If I ain't have to work, shit, I'm, I'm good. I got everything I need in here unless I need to shop. You know, my music. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to even fight. I'm relaxed. Like, you know, I haven't been this relaxed in years. I, you know, even though, it, you know, the sad things is happening, but I do, you know, appreciate the fact that I'm around my family. Like, it's crazy, too, because now my kids is begging for me to go outside and do whatever the hell. But I'm like, but when everything was on, y'all was begging me to stay home. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm home. Yeah. You know, I'm home. So, and I, and I like relaxing because, you know, when, when we get back on the on the normals, if it's normal again, you know what I'm saying? It's ripping and running. You know what I'm saying? You parents, you got kids, you got uh, uh, nine to fives, and you got careers. You got all these different elements and stuff like that. So you're constantly moving, you know, and then, you know, life surprises. So I kind of appreciate the breather, but it is the scary time where, you know, I don't know, like you said, I don't know what this is, something. It's something. Well, if it's you can, something. if you can, if you can survive this time financially, 
and come out on the other side and then resume, you know what I mean? Then, then that's a great thing. But this is going to mess up a lot of people. A lot of people are going to be in debt. A lot of people are going to be. The bills don't stop just because you stop working. You know what I mean? All these programs that are put forth and this and that, you, you know, you'll be lucky if that shit trickled down, you know what I mean, to where you are. So if you are lucky enough, like I said, to maintain that, do your thing, hold on, you know what I mean, maintain yourself, your health, and your family. And, you know, hopefully this shit will blow over and we'll get back to some kind of normalcy. When we do, I'm throwing the first motherfucking party. Uh, <laughs> and my, I'm coming. Okay, my birthday <laughs> party that I didn't throw. Yes, we gotta do that. I'm, I'm having it as soon as we come out of this pandemic, all right? so Yeah, I was supposed to have the, the cypher, too, at SOBs, and that was, that was supposed to be April 22nd. <laughs> yeah. And that's on pause. Yeah, so. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much for rocking with me. I hope you had a great time with this interview. Like it was such an honor, such a pleasure, and we definitely got to do this again for updates and see what's checking in on you, see what's going on. And I want to thank everybody who was tuning into this IG live. If you're watching this IG live on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell so you get all our um hot videos as we post it super super shout out to the legend grandmaster cast it was in the building all right, yes, all right. so. well love cha cha yes thank you for tuning in and salute y'all all right baby bye have a good night Mwah.